Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Wait, it's a wrong channel. I gave the 7900X Core i9 CPU from Intel a lot of flag for running extremely hot and having terrible value. And I still stand by those words. It cost about 1,000 US dollars despite only having 10 cores. And while that seems like a lot on paper, you can extract comparable performance from an eight core Ryzen CPU. So what then is the 7980XE offering that the 7900X does not? And if you're going with X299 for that matter, what motherboard should you choose? It's time we take a closer look at some serious firepower. This is the Gigabyte Aorus X299 Gaming 7 Pro, big name for a showstopper of a motherboard. One of the most dense ATX boards in existence from a strictly feature standpoint, loaded with this future-proofing RGB LEDs and sporting a hefty price tag. Under the hood, you'll find three M.2 slots, five full-slice PCIe slots, two at 16 lanes, one at eight, and the last two at four, a redesigned power delivery system, built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, amp-up surround sound audio, and the mighty LGA 2066 socket. I think the board looks beautiful. I love the Dr. Debug that's present. I'm counting eight four pin hybrid fan headers, though one albeit is being used by the included VRM fan, which is nice, active cooling there. And the chipset heatsink is sexy as always on these Aorus lineups. One thing I'm very keen to testing, however, is this new phase system. Skylake like X is no softy when it comes to power, and I expect a doubled six plus one phase config should keep things nice and hydrated below. And by the way, once we pop in the 7980XE behemoth, expect to pull around 600 watts of power alone from the CPU when heavily overclocked. Not easy to do, but you know, some people have gotten to five gigahertz on this chip. So now let's shift to the CPU. This is an 18 core 36 thread giant. Maybe not as big as Threadripper in terms of physical size, but undoubtedly more powerful thanks to its higher stock clock speed, as well as its overclocking potential. And the reason why I'm stressing this board from Gigabyte is is because as you'll see shortly, overclocking requires an immense amount of power and cooling, which the Gaming 7 Pro can handle with ease, at least on the power delivery side. Now, to be clear, this isn't a gaming CPU. 18 cores is severe overhead. In fact, we'd be lucky to utilize half of them. And we can see with these benchmarks here, they're showing no promises at all. In fact, GTA 5 was underperforming with respect to our 7900X, thanks to its lower clock speed. It's just more difficult in general to reach the same overclock clocks with a higher core count chip. On top of that, I couldn't reach 4.6 even if I wanted because this CPU just gets so darn hot. Even Universe Sandbox 2 failed to impress despite its heavy CPU utilization in our Earth and Many Moons simulation. Doom was a similar story. Once we passed a certain core threshold, the only thing really holding us back is our frequency. 4 GHz just isn't cutting it here. In fact, we're performing about on par with 8 core Ryzen CPUs that cost, well, albeit about 6 times less than this CPU. CPU here. Not all is dim though, we do see substantial gains in our 3D Mark Firestrike physics test, not really applicable to the hardcore gamer, but still worth noting. From a raw horsepower standpoint, the 7980XE leaves no stone unturned. We crushed in a bench at 4 GHz with a score of 3849, and if we had matched the 7900X's 4.6 GHz frequency, we'd have nearly doubled its score. Geekbench wasn't as impressive for our 18 core giant, but it's stressing a wider array of resources. And of course, we're looking at identical IPCs across Skylake X as seen in our single core scores. A typical application for higher core count CPUs is content creation, rendering, editing, and the like. We benefit from 18 cores with the 7980XE in Adobe Premiere Pro, but not to the extent I had hoped. This ultimately comes down to optimization and thus utilization. More appropriate fits for the CPU fall under the realms of encoding and virtual machines. Now, it's still difficult to recommend this platform. If you have to question whether or not you need it, then you don't need it. I've got a few friends who always end up buying these because of their heavy workloads and they favor Intel platforms, and I totally get that. But this is still a one percenter market. Heck, I would argue for that matter that Threadripper is as well. But if you've got X299 in your sights, there is one thing I can say with confidence, the Gaming 7 Pro from Gigabyte is no slouch. 
Not only does it look great and boast most of the features that you'd be looking for, it also has an excellent thermal design and a consistent UEFI. With two 8-pin power connectors, that's important for most Tokes 99 boards. You can be sure that power delivery will be in check and that your temps will also be in check thanks to the active VRM cooling and the newly designed power delivery system. In short, great board, just not so great a platform. You could squeak out 80% of the 7980XE's performance with a Threadripper 1950X, which, mind you, costs $1,000 less. I've linked both CPUs along with their compatible motherboards, the ones that I would recommend in this video's description. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Thumbs down for the opposite, or if you hate everything about life, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.